Oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It, it's the finale! It's time to finally save Princess Peach, that dumbass that got kidnapped at the beginning of the game. Ah, oh, baby, 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 I'm excited. Yeah, I just said that. Come on, Rosalina, keep up with the program. Yeah, you can totally tell this is post commentated. I'm so sorry. But my commentary was legitimately bad toward the end of the game because, honestly, what the hell is there to talk about at the end of the game? Aside from the fact that, oh, we're there at the very end of the game. Can you believe it? Oh, Lord, that was so stupid. But anyway, now we get to witness the true might of the Comet Observatory and see it in its true form. All right. Let's see what it's gonna do. What's it gonna do? Uh, yay! It gained eyebrows. Sure. All right, whatever. Now we are officially a comet again, and we can launch ourselves into the heart of Bowser's galaxy. Mwahahaha! <laughs> Destroy those airships. They have no will to live. And please get rid of that freaking UFO. I suspect Starman on. I suspect that there are starmen on board. Uh, mercy, we're already off to a great start, aren't we? Oh well. She's forming a path for us, and she's not so excited to see Luigi save Princess Peach. Probably because if he doesn't, well, she probably won't be born. Although, how the hell Luigi and Princess Peach make a space goddess, I don't know. But anyway, this is going to be a bit of a hollow victory, but... Whatever, it doesn't matter. We still have to determine the fate of the universe. Now, I would like to emphasize that this is actually round four for me, but round one for you. Feel happy that I did not force you to suffer through that crap. But, anyway, this really does get into probably my biggest criticism of the game. The fact that you have to do the entire freaking thing AGAIN in order to get the real ending. Like, that's so stupid! Like, why? Why do you have to do the whole game again? Just to freaking get the final level. Honestly, I, I've i actually been thinking like of possible solutions to how they could have actually fixed that problem. Okay. This is the easiest fix. Make Luigi available from Ghostly Galaxy onward. That's it. That way you can still play as Luigi at any time. Anytime you want to swap out with Luigi, just talk to him at Starship Mario. It's not like he has anything better to do. He's just kind of sitting there. I mean, he's gracing us with his handsomeness. That's always great. But at the same time, there is literally no reason why you have to play a second campaign just to get Luigi. It's ridiculous. But, anyway, that that's just kind of like a minor... Actually, no, that's probably the only major blemish Mario Galaxy has. Also, hi, Neptune, how are you? But, Mario Galaxy does have a couple of other blemishes that I think probably could have been ironed over, and I really hope that they iron over it whenever they do the remake, if they're doing the remake. Um, you know, one thing is just like, either make Gold Leaf and Honey Hive drastically different areas, or just make them one galaxy. Like, honestly, so much of this crap can be avoided. Like, a lot of this annoyance that I have with the game could be avoided had they just merged certain galaxies together. Like, Honey Hive and Gold Leaf, they're pretty much the same area, so you might as well just make them a bigger level and just have, like, six stars per area instead of seven. I think that would be a fair thing. Like, honestly, Galaxy 2 really did have the right idea. Galaxy 2 thought up, like, hey, why don't we just add, like, either fewer stars and more levels, or we just add more stars to smaller levels. Like, in Galaxy 2, there is always a second star in the mini-galaxies, and that makes up the 120 total. 
And the uh, main levels usually either have one star, but have a comet mission and a hidden star, or they already have two stars present, and then there's the uh, comet star. And you know what? That actually works way better. Like, it where It works. It works so much better in Galaxy 2 because it just makes more sense to have more levels. And that way you can just focus on one gimmick and you can just move on to the next one. But honestly, Galaxy just feels so big and grand that I just don't see how that would have worked in Galaxy 1. So honestly, I think they should have just done what they did in Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, just made these bigger levels in general. Dollar General. <laughs> I don't know. That's a store that's in our... How did I not get hit by that? That's a store that's in our local area, and... I don't know. Ever since I was little, I kept making that joke. It's like, General. Dollar General. <laughs> I don't know. They have some decent stuff there. But, anyway. Um... What was I thinking? Oh, yeah. Another, I guess, minor criticism is that the Bowser levels really aren't that interesting. Or rather, I should scratch that. The Bowser Jr. levels are boring as sin in this game, whereas the Bowser levels are way more interesting. Like, they are so much more interesting, more dynamic, and they just... They feel so much like... You know, they feel more like full stages, whereas Bowser Jr.'s levels are just... They're... They're brief build-ups to a boss, and that's it. I mean, look at this. Galaxy Reactor, even though it's not my favorite final level, at least feels final. It feels like this is a combination of everything you've done. And while it's not a really long stage, like, I think I beat the main part of the level within nine minutes. Um, and... Yeah, there you go. There's a new, um... And Bowser is looking at me. That's weird. <clears throat> but, I don't know. They could have done the same thing to the junior levels. And, once again, that is something Galaxy 2, to its credit, does way better. Like, they do it so much better there. Because every single one of those levels is more dynamic and way more interesting. There's way more build-up to getting to the boss fight rather than just a short intermission. And then, boss. Plus, the boss fights are a little more interesting in Galaxy 2 overall. Like, Bowser Jr.'s Mighty Mega Hammer, that one's pretty fun. I like the Boomstay Machine. That's a lot of fun. I really love the Boomstay Machine. Because, you know, it forces you to use a power-up in order to get to a high enough ground so you can finally stomp Bowser Jr. into oblivion. Unless you're in the duty games, and then he keeps showing up. Uh, let me think here. Uh, the Bowser levels, or the Bowser boss fights in Galaxy 2 are boring. Like, I don't think there really is a good Bowser boss fight in the Mario Galaxy games. Like, this is probably the best of them, and even then it's just rehashing some things we've already seen. Which is, uh, a little stupid. <laughs> it, it really is, it's just... It's the same freaking boss fight, but now you're just hopping from planetoid to planetoid. That should have freaking knocked over Bowser. That's stupid. Anyway, there you go. Um, I mean, there's a couple of gimmicks here and there, like these... I don't know what they're called. I call them sling pods, even though they're not really... Sling plants, we'll call them that. But, in reality, sorry, I touched the microphone. Because my nose was itchy. But, in general, most of the Bowser boss fights aren't that interesting, and, you know, that's kind of a shame, because Bowser is such a fun character that he should not be overshadowed by his freaking son. That's stupid. But I would say, overall, Galaxy 2 has stronger bosses than Galaxy 1. Like, I wouldn't say they're as epic as they are in Galaxy 1, but there's more of them, and a lot of them are a little bit more dynamic, and, you know, they use the power-ups a little bit more, and... I don't know, they're just... they're more interesting. I like them more. Like, there are some really dumb bosses like Glamdozer, which is not a particularly interesting boss, and is actually more frustrating than she's worth. 
But, you know, there's also Gigaleg, which forces you to use the drill. And that one's really fun, and doesn't overstay as welcome. It's, like I said, not nearly as epic as Mega Leg, but I would say it's a lot of fun, and it has great music. And hell, they brought back the Womp King in a big way, and yeah, he's freaking awesome. That was a pretty neat addition. And so on and so forth. But I'm going to get off my soapbox here because we got a cutscene. Goodbye, Bowser. Ah, <sighs> we hardly knew ye, and my face is itchy, so I bumped my microphone again. Goodbye, Bowser. And good riddance. He's not really dead. <laughs> that mouth, though. His mouth is so huge compared to his mustache. But wait, there's more! Because it's transparent. Which honestly, I think that's just a metaphor for Luigi in general. Like, he just beat Bowser, and yet he's getting a transparent Grand Star, as if someone was already here. Which, granted, he was the one that collected, but I like to think that Mario already collected it, and Luigi just did the hard work. Mario just snuck in and stole the Grand Star, ahead of him, and then, you know, stuff like that. I think it's hilarious. That's what I'm trying to say. But wait, that's not true, because it turns gold. Either that or it's pre-rendered, I don't know. Grab that woman, Luigi, even though you were very clearly gay. I mean, I think Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga kind of confirmed that. Man, my face is so itchy. I think I have eczema or something. But, eh, whatever. Luigi and Peach, I think they get along just fine. Maybe they're friends with benefits, kind of like her and Bowser. Even though both of them are probably gay. Who knows? Maybe they're, like, homosexual in a relationship sense, but they're bisexual in terms of their... Heh <laughs> heh, a rat. You know, that part. Or they could be asexual, I don't know. That's something you need to answer, Nintendo. But not before this. Man, the Hauser just looks so pathetic. Also, where's the spikes on his thing? Is that why he's kind of tripling over? Because he doesn't have his spikes? I mean, it does suck. But tell me this is not epic. Look at this. It can't be happening. But, but Bowser, you clearly have never played one of the Mario games, you always lose. It, this is just inevitable. Though that's not! Yeah! Yeah, Mario Galaxy's going there! The end of time is here, and you get to witness it, and that was hilarious. It's not nearly as funny of, as when Mario passes by, he goes, Which, that's way funnier, but... I don't know, Luigi doing that, I think that's more realistic, he's like, ah! Ah, like, you don't know how to feel about it. As well as, I don't know how to feel about this, because my ba my baby's gone. No, Luma, don't fall in. Don't fall in, you're my best friend. We went through an entire galaxy-wide adventure. Come on, man, don't fall into the pretty black hole. Don't fall into the pretty black hole. I'm gonna miss you. No. Also, are those DNA strands? I don't know. Now this is freaking awesome. Like, if you actually watch it on a standard definition TV, this looks way better. Like, if you look at it from the, uh, like, on an HD TV, it doesn't quite look right. Because for some reason, there are stars in the background. Why, I have no idea. Oh well. We have entered the Forge of Creation! I knew it! She's an Alien X! I just... I had a feeling, man. That's why she's so sexy. Because she literally built her body to be the prettiest thing possible. But anyway, let, let's read this dialogue. Do you hear the baby stars? These newborns will grow up to become galaxies someday. Well, that's awesome. Apparently Luma is the most powerful thing in the freaking universe. Probably why we're inside the Forge of Creation right now. When stars die, they turn to stardust and scatter across the cosmos. This is true. It's actually how our planet was born. 
Eventually, that stardust reforms to create a new star, and so the cycle of life continues. That's just beautiful. And once again, that's very true. Very good, Nintendo. But the cycle never repeats itself in quite the same way. Hmm. This... wait... what? What are you saying, Rosalina? What are you saying? Are you saying that time's about to reset? Are you about to send me back into the timeline? To which I did not come? You know, like Ben Tennyson. You know what, this is way more appropriate, because Luigi's wearing green, and she's kind of like Alien X or Paradox or whatever. So, yeah, that's interesting. I'll see. What do you mean? No! Don't go, waifu. I'm gonna miss you. We enter another cinematic. Ah. To this day, this still looks pretty awesome. Also, butterfly. On top of the mustache! I have been waiting to do that for so long. I, I've had to restrain myself, I'm telling you. Anyway, look at this. Water looks great. And... You're here, Guppy? What does this mean? Does this mean we've won? Have we won the war? We have! We've won the war! By that I mean the entire universe has reset. Meaning every single thing you did in Super Mario Galaxy was pointless. Hi, Dinoprana. How you doing? And the sad thing is, the only person that probably remembers is Luigi. Yeah, him and Mario are the only original members of the universe left, aside from Rosalina. Then again, Rosalina exists outside of time, so... Hmm. Peach, you look like a cat. And Bowser, you just kind of suck at what you do. I mean, you have clearly not learned that if Mario and Luigi are involved, you really should just stay out of it. Are you really just that lonely? I'm telling you, just, that's stupid. Now... The most botched epic line ever. Welcome. Welcome, new <laughs> That's hilarious. And you can't tell me it's not funny because it is. This is just why? Why did Luigi have to botch that? Like that could have been the most epic thing in the entire game. And you botched it, Luigi. Why am I questioning this? This is the most appropriate Luigi thing to do. And now, we get this wonderful cutscene. Rosalina. Rosalina? Rosalina is looking down on planet Earth, or whatever the name of this planet is. Also, I think a tropical cyclone is heading towards Mario's home world. Or home country, whatever. <sighs> That's reassuring. Beyond the stars. Good lord, can I not stutter for one video? Good lord. How can you be from beyond the stars? That doesn't make sense. And then I realized, probably whenever I was stuttering, that she exists beyond space and time. So, there you go. And she teleports. That's pretty awesome. Look at that dress freaking remote. Now, launch yourself into a brand new adventure where you will summon the awesome power of Lubba. In a story that Miyamoto will not approve. Oh well. I guess there's always next time. And I bet you were wondering what happened to that adorable little Luma that Luigi was hanging out with. There he is. He's alive! And I think he's about to go visit the mighty awesome plumber that we all know and love. Because... The Grand Finale Galaxy is now available! The Grand Finale Galaxy is now available. Yes, yes, that's great. Click the A button! Thank you. Next! Ah, what are we doing? Mario! Mario, what are you doing here? Oh well, I guess we'll stick with Mr. Mario because I just, I have, I have nothing else.
was insane. Well, I actually do have a reason for bringing Mario here because, well, the Valley Galaxy is gonna look awful familiar. Yes, indeed. You know that old saying? If you, at, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, that applies twofold here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Grand Finale Galaxy. Yes, indeedy. Welcome to the Star Festival. That's right. We're here. We finally get to celebrate the Star Festival as it was intended. And I don't give two shits what anyone says. This is an awesome ending. Because we just went through hell and back to freaking save the Star Festival. And now... Now we've grown stronger. We've grown stronger as a team. And honestly, it's just beautiful. At first, the Star Festival represented chaos and destruction, but now, now that everyone's here, now that we have met so many other people, we get to finally experience the Star Festival as it was meant to be. Free of chaos, free of judgment, just a nice, easy experience. And after what many people may consider kind of a tough level, and especially if you were doing Luigi's campaign just previously, this is just... it's nice. And honestly, I really wish that more final levels were just quiet. Letting you just take in the big experience you just had. Saving the entire galaxy. So I think Mario and Luigi just... They've earned it, man. They've earned it. And by that, I mean the players earned it. So, anyway. Well, say goodbye to everyone because once we grab the star, that's it. That's it for Mario Galaxy. So, let's talk to Toad and just admire this beautiful night. What do you have to say? Mario, there's a congratulations letter for you. Do you want it? Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for Super Mario Galaxy. I hope you guys enjoyed this LP. I know I certainly have. And my overall rating for the game is... an 8.0 out of 10. Mostly for the gravity bending mechanics and some things I did not enjoy. Objective score, or er, subjective score, still holds up to me. I consider this an A game. Very good, but with some flaws. So anyway, I'll see you guys in another life. And another console. See you then. Bye.